Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, Fungus Frank here, and today I'm going to see if I can recreate a guillotine in Trailmakers. Let's see what we can do. Alrighty folks, we are in Trailmakers on Danger Zone as per normal, and we have got to get started on our construction for our guillotine. Now, I had drawn up a few plans originally that I was going to go for, and I, in my head, like someone was, I was at work, you know, spare time, and was like, oh man, we just draw it up, and we can put it together. So... I already have an idea in mind that I'm going to go with, and we're just going to start building it out and go from there, all right? All right, so number one, we're going to start with, like, you know, a little platform, if you would. I don't think we need the basket, really. I don't think we need to go that detailed, but we're going to we're gonna figure it out. All right, so we've got... We've got a platform. It's very nice. It looks very pretty. Yeah, we like it. Got a platform, and originally what I had in mind, which, number one, what are these blocks, dude? Ugh. All right, so we have the platform built out now, and I need to give it, like, you know, little, two little doodad arms that go up. That's not too bad. And I wanted it to have, like, a track that wheels would go into, so it actually has, like, a, a, a rolling mechanism down the chute, if you would, as it headed towards the earth. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how well this works out. Because this is kind of what I had drawn up originally. See, I think 2x4s are too big here. We're going to go by the 1x4s instead. 1x4s, get placed in there. Come on now. Nice. All right, so we got 1x4s instead of the 2x4s in there. We'll mirror that. So, like, a wheel, in theory, should fit right in there. And the wheel in particular that I'm thinking of is the motorcycle wheel. Look at that. We got this so far. We'll mirror this to the other side. Just like that. Just, just like that. All right, now we need a blade of some kind that fits in there and doesn't, like, get wedged. I'm curious, like, the, the 4x4 just kind of lingers in here. Mmm. Hmm. Okay. I need a way to detach it so that it actually does fall down. So we're going to use the detachable blocks. And we'll go like this. And we'll bridge this little gap here. We'll just bring these up. Like I said, first build, first run through, we're going to make it very like simplistic it's not gonna be anything fancy for the first time through i just want to see if it'll work if my little track design that i had thought up late last night while i was planning for a video today i want to see if this comes through or not there we go detachable blocks uh let's get a seat and we'll see what happens all right here comes the first test let's see how it does mm, not great okay so it looked as if it was going to work well and just decided it it wasn't. What if we get rid of these? All right, we get rid of these little middle posts that I thought we were going to keep the wheel in, which they really didn't. And I want to see if maybe we bring this. Oh, there's no way to bring it out without attaching it there. All right, so I got rid of the sidewalls. Let's see if that makes any difference. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay, back to the drawing board. All right, uh, so now we're going for simplicity, I guess, is like the only thing that comes to mind here. And I'm not sure what to do, to be honest. Like, does this work as like a track if I do something like this? Where I have these, uh, the four by one wedges inside that actual hole, if that'll help. And uh, that, that's a no. What in the world? Uh, you know what? Maybe like the real thing, it needs a little bit of weight behind it. There we go. Okay, maybe not. There we go. What in the world? Okay, try this again. What? It like gets caught on one side and then just gives up. Okay, let's try it again. Bring it over here. Okay, so I added some weight to it to see if it would come down now. Let's see. Oh, I'm in. I, I'm, I'm in for it now. I, I mean, I started this project thinking, oh, this is gonna be so easy. I'm so excited. And it, it is not easy. I'm not having a good time. This is very difficult. <laughs> Why is it doing that? No. Okay. Okay, so I need to really rethink why it's rotating to the side i have no idea what's going on with it but we're gonna we'll get to the bottom of this i guess i don't know this thing's really throwing me for a loop i was like that'll be easy we can just build it like that it's not working all right so we're gonna swap out these one by fours for the pon small pontoon i want to see if because it's rounded it might hold its position a little bit better let me make sure we're vertical So now that we have this back, maybe if we did... Oh, ooh. When do we need a frictionless track? So skis do not have any friction on the floor. I'm curious if it works for builds as well. Okay, let's start by just swapping these out. Actually, heck, we can leave these in. Get rid of the pontoons. And we'll start by just seeing if we add the ski to the blade itself, if it 
goes down all smooth like or not. All right, so now we've got skis in place there. Not what I wanted, but it leveled it out. Hey, that was the first time it made it to the ground without getting stuck. That's progress. Okay, so that's kind of working. Uh, let's see. All right, so my plan is to, instead of having skis just on the blades, I'm going to use them as the entire track, as well as the blade. So you'll see here we have the ski on the blade as well as the skis on the track as well. And I, I'm hoping this will work out. Let me finish building this out and we'll see what happens. How much is one ski? A ski is 20? 20 complexity for one? Ugh, for one ski is 20 complexity. Oh boy. Okay, so now that I'm running into a complexity issue after halfway building through both sides, I think I don't need the skis that are inside the inside track because we'll have a ski on the blade. So hopefully this will free up at least a little bit of complexity for us. And then also still function like I'm hoping it will. Why are skis 20 complexity? Flashbulb, tell me. Tell me why. Okay, so I have it built out now. I want to just test it out and see what's going to happen. Uh, all I really did for adjustments was I added skis on the inside of the track so it's a little bit frictionless. And on, I made that on both sides. I was gonna have three points of contact with skis, and then I realized that obviously, as you can see at the top of the screen there, that complexity became an issue very quickly. So we're gonna leave it with just the tracks and the blade itself having skis for smoothness, and let's see how this does. It explodes! <laughs> Why? I don't know. Why did it just blow up? It wants to work, but somehow just like tips over? What? I don't understand. I don't understand what is going on with this build. Like, I didn't think this would be that difficult to simulate. Uh, but apparently it is, so... No idea why. I have no idea why this is so difficult to simulate as far as physics go. I didn't think it would be that hard. Why are there so many? All right, you know what? I don't want this thing to tilt. We're gonna anchor it to the ground. I'm not messing around with this thing. I'm tired of this build flipping over on me. This is ridiculous. Anchor, 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 anchor. All right, perfect. Don't move. That was our first successful test. It wasn't very fast, but my word, it actually functioned. So I think we're catching the edges of the skis here. Let's go ahead and just flip them around and see if there's an improvement. Okay, so the skis have been flipped around. Let's go for another test. It's so close, man. I'm sitting here like, it's so close to working. It's just, it's just not quite there. Maybe we flip the skis on the blade around. All right, so we're basically just going through trial and error now until we can figure out something that works. I'm going to test this again. I just flipped the skis on the blade this time. No, dude. All right. Uh, what is happening here? Can I, can I push it down? Oh, go down. And it got stuck again. More weight, maybe? All right. I have basically tripled the weight now just to see if maybe it was a weight issue. Let's see. And now it won't move. Why won't you work? So I made a few adjustments and all I've done is instead of having the skis be on the rail system, we're gonna put the skis on just the blade. I wanna see how well this functions if it slides within this little track here. And uh, let's see if there's a difference. Oh my word, that's our first time we had a successful test and actually slid down the whole thing. Wow, okay. That is progress, baby. That's not bad. Okay, so for our first test, it worked pretty good. The second test, not so much. Let's see. It goes down. It just wiggles so darn much. I'm trying to figure out why. Maybe it's because these are actually too close together. And maybe if I just bring it out by one, like give it at least some wiggle room to fall, maybe that'll help it out. Make the track a little bit wider so it's not so fixed in place. That's not too bad. Try it again. Yeah, that that's that's working okay. Okay, now I need to see how much damage we can get this thing to deal. So I want more weights. It's still getting stuck somehow. Okay, I need to bring out everything by one. So like, it'll still have a track, but 
a big old gap. Okay, so this time I created a gap wide enough for that the track is basically free floating. Free free now there is a gap, a one block gap between the skis on the blade and the track itself. I wanted to see if it'll free fall into place. It looks like it did. All right, let's see how we're doing now. Oh, that's so much heavier now. Yes, okay, this might actually work. Okay, I like where this is headed. Now I just want to see if I can make the blade fall even faster. We're going to throw in some propulsion. A little bit of thrust there, a little bit of thrust there. Huh, it's uneven. Hmm, let's fix that. <laughs> yes, dude. Okay, so I did make some design changes. All I really did was I changed it instead of having a one 4x4 wedge, I did mirror it to the other side, so at least now it has like a nice little blade look to it. And I also made everything symmetrical. So now it actually looks uh, unison and even. Let's give it a test. I don't have these thrusters hooked up yet, but we're still going to see what happens. Okay, 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 okay. We'll try again. Okay, but that initial impact was pretty good, I will say. Try it again. That's got some heft to it. I mean, it breaks the guillotine on the way down. That's impressive. Okay. I'm liking where this is going. I've got a good feeling about this. So now, all I need is a little bit of logic hooked up to this. And we're going to use an XOR gate. Slap it right here. This is going to be hooked up here to toggle this with A. That's going to toggle these thrusters and the detachable blocks. So now we can actually unprogram these detachable blocks. Turn those off. And we'll give them like a, you know, half second delay. So it at least gives our thrusters some time to speed up. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm liking how it's working so far. All I want to do now is see if I can make it have a bigger impact. The only way I can think to do that is to make the track longer. So, let's adjust it. Okay, so I brought it up by another 16 units just to give it a little bit more height. Let's see how it works this time. It looks pretty impactful, okay. It's not too bad. It's really not that bad at all. It's it's functioning. All I want to do now is make it automatic. So I'm going to set up a distance sensor on the inside of the, the rails there, and then we're going to see if we can put something in between there and dice it up. Your eyeball is caught. Man, I knew that was gonna... Ah! All right, Mr. Duckman. It's time to meet your maker. Guillotine, for the love of everything, please just work. <laughs> we killed the duck! 